Welcome back, everybody. This is episode 12, and uh, I hope you've subscribed to our YouTube channel. If you haven't, please go over there. It costs nothing, but it helps us out quite a bit. Um, today, I'm working on another bracket that uh, belongs to the cockpit section, and um, it's one that we don't have any design data for, but we're fortunate to have surviving components. Both port and starboard are mirrors. Um, this diagonal strut here is uh, out of panel HK, which is the rear wing spar carry through underneath the pilot seat that goes directly through the cockpit section. So uh, these brackets are the aileron control pulley brackets and um, I've already pulled pulled some of these guys off but uh, it's come up as we start to um, get through the the last bit of design work in the cockpit and the, all the verification that Bruce is doing. These are one assembly that we still have to tackle on that. So uh, I'll start pulling it apart by getting that strut off of there and uh, we'll go into a little bit more detail on exactly what I'm doing to dis both disassemble it and get the data off to Bruce for design. I did give these a little toot with the uh, penetrating oil. So this is one thing I noticed uh, specifically on this back HK panel was the amount of little locking plates and uh, special shims that they put in there. So you can see with that, there's another one. Um, it's just a little piece of packing that's got uh, radiuses put on it, but each one of them that I've found so far has their own uh, hawker part number. So I'll try and pull that out of there. There we go. Should be able to see that. There's uh, there's the little hawker number right there. Um, I'm not going to go too far with this guy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wire that back into place there. Just with a piece of tagging wire. Definitely don't want to lose it. I'm going to go through twice on that one. And... Uh, I'll get to that one when I document that assembly. Right now I'm most concerned with this one here. So, But here's another little pile of the different shims and uh, packing pieces that they have there. These ones all came off the assembly when I was disassembling that um, from the, the cockpit section many moons ago. Um, but you can see they're, they're important to have. <laughs> Well, it's still there. I just want to make sure that these are the same. They're not. That's one thing I've found uh, throughout this aircraft is that um, because of all the different shims and little packing pieces that quite often bolts side by side have different lengths on them. And that's because there's so many little things that are attached. So um, make sure they go back the way they were. So this is just temporary, but it's so that I, so I don't lose track of what I've done here. And then uh, I'll bag them and tag them to the specific hole that they came from so they don't get all mixed up. So now there's two distance pieces in there. This is the one from here. Everything's special. <laughs> I 
Look at that. And then there's also another one. If you can see down in there, there's another one for the um, tubes that went through the the strut and then this part. So those should come free now too. Just going to use a wrench. And again, they, um, they use either tubular or rolled distance tubes. In this case, these are the rolled ones. You can see the split down the side. There you go. Pretty fancy. And now that's all of the mechanical stuff. We'll pull these two locking tabs off. And to do that, uh, they're riveted on, so standard drilling for rivets is to drill the head off. The principle is that uh, you drill the thickness of the head with a drill bit approximately the same size as the shank of the rivet, and um, then you break the head off just with a punch. You don't want to go into the material or into your parts, or you'd like to avoid it as much as possible because uh, if you're slightly off center, it just helps enlarge the hole. So, best thing to do is knock the heads off just like that. We'll do these uh, four down here, and then back it up properly and with a punch and hammer punch those out. These fasteners are 1 8 diameter rivets so to punch them out and uh, end up without forcing um, or expanding the rivet I use one punch smaller so in this case it's going to be a 3 30 seconds punch. You just want good stable support. They should knock out quite quite easily. So those ones, we'll, I'll put them on a backing block so we don't deform the part inside. Those are actually in really good shape. So uh, I can see some faint part numbers while it's still dirty, so I'll get them cleaned up. And um, we'll do some investigation and hopefully get some data off for uh, CAD design. We're back to this guy. Just going to hold the parts in the general positions that they sat, which is still vaguely identifiable, <laughs> which is there. And then uh, I'll go back to my place over here and mark them up to make sure they don't get confused as I take measurements. I may have to reapply my markings, but that's okay. And that is because um, I'm using alcohol here just to get all the goop off. So an interesting thing here is um, I think I mentioned that I thought these were bent. They're absolutely not bent. That's very special. <laughs> so quite an interesting part. You can see that it's longer on this side of that joint than it is over here. 
and um, it actually holds those aileron pulleys at an angle and the other one over on the tube is the same thing. So uh, interesting little part, well worth investigating to see if we can clean it up. There's a bit of corrosion on there I'm not too happy with but uh, we'll definitely have a look at those ones. Very interesting. See if we can find a part number on them possibly. Pretty rare with parts that small though. And another thing I noticed is um, I've marked these locations three and four and that's where these distance tubes were. One is made out of phenolic and uh, one is made out of aluminum so I'm not sure that there's actually a point to that maybe it's just whatever came out of the bin but it's another interesting little development. We keep as much of this part uh, orientation as possible it just saves so much time. Uh, so now I'm going to look for a couple part numbers and we'll identify the part numbers on them and then I'll get to taking very specific pictures of them and show you how I mark them up. So there is a mark in here, but it's just, uh, there is an N, as in November, in a circle. And there is uh, NP, so November Papa. See if I can maybe clean up the back in there. Oh, there we go. Sneaky. Here's the Hawker number, it's 98504, Alpha 98504. So marks are still good. Found that guy. This guy was apparent right off the bat. You can see it's right here. Little tiny wipe. That is uh, Alpha 98502. So that went fairly smoothly, uh, not too much extensive corrosion inside or anything that was preventing things from coming apart there, so that was a little bit refreshing. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of my notes and uh, scribble on these uh, the individual components for this assembly and I'll get that off to Bruce for uh, initial CAD work. There'll probably be a couple questions, I may have missed some things or may have not described them appropriately, so we'll do usually do a little bit of back and forth until I can convey what I actually did <laughs> properly. And then uh, we'll get the, Bruce will get the CAD models built up. Now there's going to be a delay uh, uh, in seeing further development on those parts until we're at the stage of the cockpit build where we're going to need to install them. But uh, rest assured, I'm sure I'll be doing a video on that so I can follow through with what we've shown you here. Now I've already started filming and, and completed filming episode 13 and it's really exciting. I had a great time doing it. So I hope you guys will join me next time for episode 13 when we uh, go into answering some questions and showing you a process that there's been a lot of uh, requests about. So if you haven't already subscribed to our paid subscription channel and you're able to, please consider doing so. Every penny goes towards the airworthy rebuild of Hawker Typhoon JP843. And uh, you'll not only get access to the great content in our episodes, you'll get it completely ad-free and you'll get it in advance of any other publication. In addition to that, we also have forums over there and I give you shop updates and information and uh, photographs now that uh, you'll see nowhere else. So if you're able to, please do. It really helps us out. And uh, until next time, guys, take care. Cheers. <laughs>